Go to seek recognition. I rise as the designee of the gentlewoman from Connecticut, and I move to strike the last word. General lady is recognized for five minutes. Mr. Chair, I yield to the gentleman from Illinois, the distinguished ranking member of the Transportation, Housing, and Urban Development Subcommittee, Mr. Quigley. The uh, gentleman from Illinois is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair, I cannot in good faith support this legislation without the inclusion of funding for the Ukraine Security Assistance Initiative. For this reason, at the appropriate time, I will offer a motion to recommit this bill back to committee. If the House rules had permitted, I would have offered the motion with an important amendment to this bill. My amendment would protect funding for the Ukraine Security Assistance Initiative that has been included in this defense appropriations bill since 2016. UASI, USAI, is a major reason why the Ukrainian army is a much different, a much better army than when it was when the Russians took Crimea a decade ago. This program is central to the strategy to help Ukraine fight Russian aggression, and therefore central to our own efforts to protect democracy across the globe. Ukraine's battle for its independence has not ended. Our support for them must not end either. Many people in this room voted to provide $61 billion in supplemental funding for Ukraine, but it's important to remember that $13 billion went to replenish U.S. equipment. $7 billion went to strengthen our industrial base and to increase weapons production, and $7 billion to bolster U.S. US forces in Europe and the Middle East but it's still not enough. As recently as March, Russia was firing around 10,000 shells a day compared to just 2,000 from the Ukrainian side. Putin has indeed doubled down, dramatically increasing his military production to the point of 29% of his budget. UASI allows Ukraine to purchase weapons and equipment directly from U.S. manufacturers. An investment in this initiative is an investment in our own economy not a handout. The program has been used to integrate the Ukraine military with Western militaries, increasing their capabilities and training their soldiers. But it's critical to understand that the Department of Defense has committed $8.2 billion of the approximately $13.8 billion in UASI funding appropriated through the Ukraine Supplemental and anticipates committing the remainder of the funds by the end of calendar year 2024. If we fail to continue this funding, we would effectively signal to authoritarian leaders around the world with expansionist ambition that the U.S. will allow them to act with impunity. At the end of the debate, I will insert into the record the text of this amendment, and I hope my colleagues will join me in voting for the motion to recommit, and I yield back. Can Mr. Chair, Minnesota? I'd like to thank the gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Uh, Quigley, for uh, the MTR, and I look forward to voting for it. Let me just uh, add, the Ukrainian Supplemental Assistance Initiative has long-term spending, which has been in the bill since 2016. And as the gentleman pointed out, that's one of the reasons why Ukraine was ready to stand up to this unjustified, hostile um, invasion by Russia. So let us work together uh, and coordinate closely with our allies. Let us support the MTR. And with that, I yield back. General Lady yields back.